Yo, what's poppin' guys, Sizzle here, and in this video, I'll be showing you the best way to play Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and Super Game Boy games all in one. This emulator is the best for all four of those systems. Uh, what I will not be showing you in this video, unfortunately, is how to get the Game Boy BIOS files and ROM files backed up off of your Game Boy. I'll try to link videos in the description if I can find any, but it's a pretty long and complicated process. Uh, so I don't want to just cover it in this video here, but you can see these are the BIOS files you generally want, one for each system as .bin files, and then for ROMs, you just want GBA for Game Boy Advance, GBC for Game Boy Color, and GB files for Game Boy. If you have different file extensions for your files, you probably did your backups incorrectly, just a fair warning. And with that fair warning out of the way, let's get into the actual setup. Uh, so first off, you want to go to mgba.io, which is the official website for the emulator, which I'll have linked in the description. Hit downloads, go find whatever you want to use. In my case, it's Windows 64-bit portable, which for most people is what you want to use. So go click on that to install it, and then hit save as and save it wherever you want to use it. In my case, I'm going to put it on the desktop just for this tutorial. Now that it's finished downloading, we can go to close this window and go extract MGBA into its own folder like so. And once we got that up and running, just double click in there, double click into the folder inside of it, double click on MGBA EXE, and it should pop up with a nice little window like this. And we'll just want to go change our settings real quick. So we'll go to tools, then settings. And from here, generally the only thing I like changing here is the volume, I like bringing it to about half to start with, and I make it lower or higher as I need to be. I turn off lock aspect ratio because I like being able to stretch my game and make it as big as my screen. And by linear filtering, it's generally just nice to have in my opinion. Uh, from here, gameplay, defaults are amazing. Interface, uh, when it says library here, list view, hit show when no game open. And then when we're over here and we hit apply, you can see now instead of being a blank screen, it says name, location, platform, size, and all that. And if we actually have our ROMs properly set up here, it'll actually show all the different ROMs that you have to play on the Game Boy, which is amazing. Uh, everything beyond there, show FPS and title bar, I don't really need that, so I'll turn that off. Dynamically update window title, I don't really need that either, I'll turn that off as well. Uh, just makes some stuff annoying when it comes to recording, so I'd rather not deal with it. After that, we can go to update. You can update if you want. This hasn't had an update in a while, so I'm not gonna mess with that. Under emulation, generally I like leaving everything as is. Under enhancements, I like changing the high resolution scale, which is the in-game resolution. I like changing that to about 1200 by 800. I feel like after this, you get pretty diminishing returns. And even before this, you honestly get pretty diminishing returns. So just that's about all of it there. Uh, for BIOS files, we're gonna hit browse and then go into our BIOS folder and set those one by one. So we got the Game Boy BIOS file, the Super Game Boy BIOS file, the Game Boy Color BIOS file, and the Game Boy Advance BIOS file. Once those are all good, make sure you hit apply so that that can load properly. Then we want to go to paths and leave everything as same directory as the ROM, just because that's just the easiest way to do things. And we'll actually set our ROM thing later on, I still believe. Logging, just leave as is. Game Boy, just leave all that is. Keyboard, here you can set your controls on keyboard. So for example, I like WASD because that's just what I'm used to. I can use an R and T here, and the rest I'll just kind of leave as it is because I don't think I should need them for any of these games to demo. I'll change if we need to. And then controller, which we'll actually be using. You can select the controller that you've connected right here. So in my case, my Xbox controller. And just like that, as you press stuff, it'll load in A, B, select, start, L, and R. Boom, just like that, and hit apply. Shortcuts, we can do stuff here if we want. Shaders, there's also some stuff here I'm not going to mess with as well. And yeah, that's about it in terms of settings. All we need to do now is set our path. So we want to do add folder to library right here and then select our roms folder right here and you can see all of our different roms have loaded in sonic advance spy vs spy and tetris 2 are all right there and yeah uh, from here everything should be good to go and if we just go boot up for example uh, tetris 2 let's see just like that 
we have the Super Game Boy version of Tetris 2, which you can tell because it is a colored version of what was otherwise a Game Boy game. And I'm um, really, really bad at Tetris. <laughs> I didn't really play it too, too much just by owning it. Uh, but that's working all nice and dandy. We can then stop the ROM, load the ROM, whatever. I'm going to actually hit emulation and then shut down so it stops the ROM. And from here, we can go load up Spy vs. Spy, which is our Game Boy Color game. And as you can see, got a nice little intro. And everything is, is nice and functional. I mean, this is Spy vs. Spy on the Game Boy Color with the Game Boy Colors. And lovely, awful sound effects that the Game Boy Color unfortunately had. But yeah, everything's working right there. We shut that down, and then we can go to Sonic Advance, and the reason that I'm using Sonic Advance as the demo, despite having a lot of other games possibly demo, is because this is one of the best games when it comes to demoing the in-game HD setting that we set. A lot of games don't even really change when you change their internal resolution too much, but this game benefits heavily. It was developed very, I guess, correctly, for lack of better words, where if we go to... Uh, I don't know, like it's time attack or something. We got where we can select characters easily. Yeah, right here. This is like a good showcase. We look at them here. They don't look super crazy. If we go to enhancements, we turn down our resolution scale. Nothing's really changing. Ah, that's fine. Make sure in enhancements we set it to OpenGL. Uh, I'm going to probably put a little editing thing there. You can see just how much clearer that got. Whereas before, because we were using OpenGL in the video settings, that's why we should use it here. This is what it looks like normally. This is what it looks like with, you know, six times resolution and even five times looks about the exact same. But this game has a very, very high resolution sprites compared to other stars, right? We go back, we go back away from this, go back to like Spy vs. Spy. It's not going to look any cleaner, despite us having this crazy, crazy cool resolution. Okay. So if we load that up real quick, you can hold tab to speed up like this. You can see it looks exactly the same. Before we end things off, just a quick reminder, just like any other emulator, you can right-click the ROM file, hit open with, more apps, make sure always use this app is selected, hit look for another app, make your way over to MGBA, and then select MGBA.exe and hit open to make it so that you can actually just open the emulator directly from the actual ROM file itself. And you can do this with every single one of these ROMs. But yeah, uh, that's that. That's everything you need to know about playing Game Boy games with MGBA. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns in the comments below, and I'll try to respond to them if I see them and I know the answer. And with that being said, hopefully y'all enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.